Hi, my name is DM Barr, and I am honored to have been asked back to Rough and Ready to read for a fourth time, so thank you very much. Tonight, I'll be reading from my newest release. It's called Saving Grace, a psychological thriller. Surprise, surprise, it is a psychological thriller. And it will be released by Black Rose Writing on October 15th, available on Amazon and wherever fine books are sold. I'm going to be reading from the second chapter in the book. Uh, the first chapter is a murder, so you're going to have to pick it up to figure out who's murder. But I'll start with chapter two. Grace Randell tried in vain to focus on her therapist's questions and not the excitement humming through her veins. Newfound clarity threatened, to, th threatened her mission to maintain her usual flat affect if she hoped to get away with this charade. Behind and above her doctor's head, a kamikaze, fly, a kamikaze fly's repeated attempts to escape the room had captured her attention. It would collide with the pain facing out onto the garden, only to retreat and then confront the glass. Grace admired the tenacity. It was either the world's most determined insect or one brain damage beyond repair. If, brain, if flies had brains, that is, she wasn't sure. But assuming it had a brain, one impaired somehow, then they were kindred spirits. And what better place to meet than her psychiatrist's office? Grace, you were saying? Dr. Lame, Emma Lehman raised her eyebrows, her blonde page boy and plump cheerful face making her appear younger than someone in her mid sixties. How do you plan to handle tonight's event? And this is an aside. I splurged on a slim, cool black dress, black sandals and a pearl choker, just like Holly Golightly. Well, more chunky than slim, but I don't think Truman Capote will come back from the grave and say anything. Grace tucked away her sarcasm and assumed her usual monotonous tone. I'm not sure, so many new people. Layman would flip as she knew the truth. Over the past month, Grace had committed the ultimate offense, weaning herself off clonopin, Topamax, Abilify, and her other psychotropic meds. While her usual cocktail of pills didn't prevent her from working, driving, or mothering her kids, they dulled her outlook and caused her to doubt her perceptions. Was it so terrible to crave acuity on such a special night? She'd been 100% clean for a week now, though she'd spent part of that time in bed, attributing the nausea, tremors, sweating, and other withdrawal symptoms to a bad case of the flu. Her family had bought the story, thank God. So far, so good. Let's look past the strangers. Keep our eyes on the prize. What are your goals for the evening? Despite Layman's urging, Grace hesitated to respond. Far safer to concentrate on the insect's dilemma than her own desire to appear more lucid than languid for just one evening. After 25 years of marriage, didn't Elliot deserve that? If she were present and attentive tonight, it might put an end to their sexual drought. And if so, perhaps the late nights and frequent absences would also end, the ones he always explained away as work-related. Invitations to the company's annual holiday party usually excluded spouses, or so Elliot told her year after year. But this Thanksgiving, he'd made a point of inviting her. It had to mean something. A detente in their Cold War? She'd taken a long, hard look in the mirror that morning. At 45, she no longer got mistaken for Sandra Bullock, but despite the trappings of middle age, the dark under eye circles, the few rogue silver strands that eluded her bottle of Clairol, the unwelcome bulges that homesteaded on formerly flat land, was it possible that desirability didn't have an expiration date? Grace, your goals. The therapist tapped her notebook against her thigh. The flies buzzing reverberated, drowning out Layman's question, how to help it escape without appearing too focused? An idea sprang to mind, something that would play right into her doctor's expectations. Grace gasped for breath, slowly at first, and then set steadily increasing until she reached full blown hyperventilation. She tottered toward the window, winking at the fly while waiting for Layman to get the, take the hint and let in some cold November air. The doctor jumped up and hurried to her side, leaving Grace delighted at the success of her plan. Swat! Layman pulled her notebook from the window and the fly's tiny carcass fell to the floor. Then she unlashed the sashes and lifted the bottom pane. 
urging Grace to suck in the lungfuls of oxygen she craved. After a few deep breaths, Grace slunk back to her seat, her burgeoning mania tempered by what she saw as a clear omen of the night ahead. For the next 30 minutes, she sat comatose as Lehman rambled on, certain that the doctor expected nothing more of her and angry at herself that for once she had. And that's everything. You'll have to buy the book to hear the rest or read the rest. So thank you very much. Please remember to wear your mask over your nose and get out and vote. Thank you.